Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I am super excited about what we're going to be going over. If you haven't read the title already, we are going to be covering this 2004 Apple iBook G4, still in its original box. It was an awesome find and I'm excited to add it to my collection. Today, we're going to open it up, go through it, check its specs, make sure it all works, and then test out a couple of my favorite games for the old power PC. Before we get started, please take a second, hit that subscribe button, and like this video. It really means a lot to me and helps the channel grow. All right, let's start by unboxing this really good example of an iBook G4. First, we might as well go over the specs of this beautiful computer. Uh, 1.2 gigahertz PowerPC G4 processor. It's got 256 gigabytes RAM, 60 gigabyte hard drive. It has a DVD-ROM CD rewriter, 14.1 inch screen, uh, and it has active uh, TFT Active Matrix, which was a big deal uh, when this computer came out, and then an ATI. Mobility Radeon 9000 with a whopping 32 megabytes of video memory. I wonder how well this will play the games that I have lined up to test on this computer. Uh, my guess is it may be a little sketchy. Um, it does have built-in Wi-Fi uh, with a FireWire 400 port. Um, this one still has the original battery, uh, which is pretty cool. And um, with all of that, let's start busting this thing open. Oh, and another neat thing. It still has the price on it from when it was new, $999 from the Weber State University bookstore. Now, I have a theory that I'll further explain in a little bit that this was a display model at the bookstore at Weaver State University. Um, but for now, let's start opening this thing. So right off the bat, we are greeted with the installation discs recovery disks. This particular version of Mac OS is on two disks. And then we also have World Book, which I believe is an encyclopedia type software, 2004 edition. And it was built for Mac OS 10. That's how you know it was good. Go ahead and put this back inside the plastic here. have uh, an ethernet cable as well as uh, the extender for the power adapter and an original power adapter that is in pretty decent condition. I'm going to go ahead and slide that back in there. Put these in now for the moment of excitement. Talk about a pretty sight. It is by no means a light machine. And I'm 
filming this part of the video after having cleaned it all up. So it is a little shinier than at some points during the video you will see how dirty this actually was. It does seem to have a little bit of a gap here. Um, however, the battery doesn't seem to be bulging. Uh, I was able to charge the battery up and see that it does hold the charge. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this off to the side real quick. We'll go ahead and get that in center there. Let's see if it's held up the battery from a few days ago that I charged. Okay. Now, part of the reason that I determined this was a demo unit, something that sat on the shelf uh, at Weber State University's bookstore, is the keys have yellowed, which would lead me to think that this was in an upright position for the majority of its life. Um, furthermore, the keys, as you can see, have worn uh, off in, in many of the... Uh, on many of the keys. I think this is probably because it was used, played with by customers coming in. Uh, if anyone knows of a good place to buy new keys, I would love to replace all these keys with nice shiny white ones. But anyway, leave that in the comments below if you know of a good place. Let's see if the battery held a charge. Holy cow, it did. What a beautiful loading screen classic apple i remember in elementary school uh, one of the sixth grade teachers at my elementary school was issued one of these by the school district as her main computer uh, which was awesome because at the time all of the teachers had uh, second generation imac uh, well, it's the original generation, but the second version, the indigo blue and uh, whatever the green color was. I remember my teacher in particular had a green see-through iMac G3, and then this teacher showed up, and I thought, wow, that is awesome. And I thought this was such a cool laptop at the time. Uh, as you can see, the display looks great. Hopefully it comes through the camera half decent. Um, man, the battery really held up well. It, it's probably been a week since I put any charge on this. And then we can go into the about and confirm the specs. Power PC G4. What a neat little piece of Apple history. I was lucky to snag this in box. Mac OS version 10.3. That is really just a neat computer. What a beautiful piece of history. I mean, it's not by any means the most attractive. Uh, the all white tended to be uh, hard to keep clean and it really showed age as it got older. Uh, I think I've said this before. Some of my favorite MacBooks were the uh, MacBook Pro 2007, 2008, the boxier before they went to the unibody. That is one of my favorite Macs. And of course, the most beautiful Mac ever made was the 2013 Mac Pro, the cylinder shape, which is controversial. People are gonna tell me I'm crazy, but as far as beauty and design and uh, something that's kind of timeless, the Mac Pro 2013. Another computer, and this is kind of a little bit of teaser for what's coming up, another one of Apple's most beautiful designs. Second generation iMac. This is gonna be in an upcoming video. So again, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna tear this whole thing down and clean it all up and polish it. And I'm gonna actually add this to my permanent iMac collection because this was one of my favorite Apple designs, Apple products. 
Anyway, now let's go on to a couple of the games that I wanted to test out on this machine. We're going to start off by playing Returned Castle. Wolfenstein Returned Castle, originally released November 19th, 2001 for Windows. And then later on it was released for the PS2, the Xbox, and obviously for Macintosh the bat it hit me with an error message cannot write to hunkusage.bat and at this point I thought everything was over but I just exited and then kept going I'm going to kind of skip through most of the beginning of the story because the point of this is to actually test out how well the game how well it gamed and played retro Mac games from the time one of the first things that I noticed right off the bat was that it is a little bit choppy. Probably not the best PC to game with or Mac to game with. Uh, frame rates were dropping and it's just lag. And then on top of all of that, I was using a mouse that was, the cord was too short because the USB plug is all the way on the left side. Bad design by Apple for this particular application speeding up to where we get to a little action this upcoming part really shows where it lags as i try to run up the spiral stairs here Overall, it did an okay job uh, playing the game. Like I said, there was some stuttering, more stuttering than I would like. I wouldn't want to run through the campaign using this Mac, this iBook. I'd probably rather do it on uh, something with a little bit more graphical ability. Now let's switch over to a different game, uh, Halo, the original Halo that was ported over to the Mac. Playing through the first level, uh, I noticed a tremendous amount of lag, especially in more intense action scenes. You really notice it, like right here, where it's trying to load um, upcoming scenery, or especially as you're running and it's trying to render and keep everything going. It uh, slows down a lot, and I even have this on minimum settings. Uh, playing this on my iMac G5 is just smooth. So this and Wolfenstein are probably better suited on uh, a G5 machine. I love me some sniper shots with the pistol. Great for those further away enemies. And here during intense combat scenes as you can see things are just lagging up and slow the controls aren't responsive and it just makes it pretty tough to uh, achieve anything because one minute you're getting into the fight then it all slows down and you're afraid you're gonna die now it's time to give this thing a little bit of a cleaning as you can see it uh, the mouse seems to be heavily used and uh, I really don't like, as I mentioned earlier, the mouse. You have to plug it in on the left side, and their own Apple mouse from this period barely even reaches over. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't use a laptop trackpad, especially if you're trying to play a game. But I prefer a physical mouse to do anything. To clean it, we're going to start off with just some Windex and a microfiber rag. That'll get most of the gunk off of it. And then the same thing to get that display looking all beautiful. The microfiber and some Windex. Uh, Windex fixes everything. And then onto the outside, uh, same thing, microfiber rag. 
I like to use some isopropyl alcohol that, to attempt to remove any scuff marks or adhesives that have been stuck on it. That really just makes it go right away. And then, again, Windex with a microfiber rag just polishes it all up and makes it look beautiful. And after that, we have a beautiful, clean 2004 Apple iBook the 2004 Apple iBook G4. It was an awesome little budget laptop for Apple uh, in 2004, big in the education market, and I'm just happy that I was able to get my hands on one that is in such a good condition with the original box and all the original, everything that comes with it. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.